So first up, we are heading into the kitchen. We're going to take a look at healthy alternatives for your kitchen staples. Thanks to our holistic nutritionist, Andrea Donsky. <laughs> talking about this because we get in the kitchen and oh my goodness are we confused every decade has a new list of foods you're not right. supposed to eat or things you shouldn't touch right. or maybe you should be eating all of the coconut milk or you know we don't know that's right so let's start with uh, the basics we're doing salt sugar oil and and looking at what we should be using that's right healthier alternatives healthy so some of the basics we might be buying for example do you find that you buy things on autopilot things yes. that you're used to or that you're familiar or that maybe your parents bought yes right so Absolutely. here's some healthier options all right so we're gonna start with salt but I'm gonna ask you a question first okay. I thought this was really interesting this looks scrumptious isn't that beautiful oh. okay do you know Love where the it. original expression with a grain of salt came from it sounds ancient. It is ancient. Um, and it sounds like the sort of thing that you would learn from your grandma. So it came actually from 79 AD, okay. so a long time ago. Yeah. And it was a warning for people who were poisoned. And only certain antidotes worked if they were taken with a grain, a grain of, of salt. salt. Isn't that interesting? So it's a, very different than how it's used today, which is more of an implied skepticism. Yes. So for example, Take everything I'm saying today with a grain of salt. <laughs> totally kidding, do not. Take me seriously, yeah, absolutely take me seriously and listen to what I'm saying. Okay, so it's evolved okay. over the years. It has the evolved. Okay, <laughs> so well, most of us when we think of table salt, we think of rest, uh, table salt. You think yes. of salt that's sodium chloride. Yes. But we don't really like sodium chloride because it has, it's stripped of its minerals. Mm. It's also bleached. It has anti-caking agents that prevent it from clumping. Got it. So you know what? We want to keep that to the side. And it's mostly used for baking and in restaurants anyways. Yeah. So what we recommend is swapping with some healthier alternatives like Himalayan salt or herbed sea salt. So beautiful. So what kind of salt is this? So this, this is beautiful pink Himalayan salt. salt. That is gorgeous. Now we need salt. Our bodies need salt to function properly. Yeah. Right? But the type of salt that we choose is very important when it comes to our health. Okay. So Himalayan salt comes from the Himalayan mountains. Yes. It's unrefined and it has over 84 naturally occurring minerals, including iodine, Good. which is added to table salt, right? So oh. this is naturally occurring, which yes. is really nice. What I like about Himalayan salt is you can also use it. You can take a bath in it. It helps mm. to rejuvenate our skin. Or you could use this beautiful salt lamp around your house. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't just look beautiful, like yeah. you said, but it also has a purpose. What does it, it do? It helps to clean our air. Oh, it, it reduces does. airborne allergens around the home. So I have a ton of these around my house. Do you have pets? Because won't they lick that? I did have a pet. I don't have one anymore. I'm but sorry. no. But, <laughs> but you know what? It's true. It is used for pets for, uh, for licking it. Oh, they will lick it and it's okay. I mean, I know it is used for certain animals, so I think it is, but I'm not an salt. animal expert. But then we also have sea salt, which is yeah. made from evaporated seawater. Okay. This is an herb sea salt. It's also unrefined, full of full of trace minerals, which is great as well. Yeah. Both of these can be used to replenish electrolytes after sweating excessively. Good. And I want you to smell this. Okay. This has 12 different organic oh. herbs and spices and vegetables added, like celery and parsley. Isn't that amazing? It smells like oregano. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it smells amazing. So it's so flavorful, which imagine what it'll do to your food. Very nice. Right? So okay, really so beautiful. salt, like, you don't have to cut salt all out of your diet. You just no. have to use the right salt because we do right. need iodine. Exactly. We, we need do. that in and our And all bodies. the trace minerals that it provides, right? Let's talk about sugar, sugar. All right. <laughs> I love sugar. I so love apparently, sugar are there any good sugars? Please tell me there's some good sugars. So there are really good natural alternative sweeteners. But just, okay. I want to ask first, do you know how many, how many teaspoons of sugar we should have a day? Added sugar. Probably like half a teaspoon, something ridiculous. It's actually six teaspoons for women yeah. and nine for men. And to put that into perspective, yeah. nine teaspoons is equal roughly to a 12 ounce can of soda. Okay. okay. So that's just putting it into perspective. So one, so not even a can of soda a day? Pretty much. Okay. All and right. that's for men. So yes, and there are some men. great swaps that we can make when it comes to sugar because it's hard to live without it. Really, yes. we, want that, we want that sweetness. So honey, we've talked about that quite yes. a bit. Coconut palm sugar, which is really nice. So that's okay, even though there's palm in there. And you know, we've I've heard bad things about palm sugar, palm oil, no, palm. So this everything. is the sap from the coconut palm tree. It's a little oh, bit different than I palm see. oil, I think okay. what you're thinking about. Okay. It's great because it has a little bit of a lower glycemic index and Good. refined white sugar, the stuff we know is bad for us. Yes. As well as what I also like as well as xylitol, erythritol, and stevia. Yes. All great alternative sweeteners that I use myself. Me too. And one of the newest trends is monk fruit. Have you heard of it? No. I mean, well, I might have heard of it from you, but I've I haven't seen it in a sugar. So, so monk this fruit is sugar. monk fruit, right? So a lot of the times monk fruit is mixed with other sweeteners like erythritol. Here, I yeah. want you to try it. What's great about monk fruit is that How it has zero calories. 
It mm. has zero carbohydrates and it will have zero effect on our blood sugar level. So it's completely safe for diabetics. That sounds healthy. It's really good for us. Really? And it's great. And it's, does it not taste just it's, as sweet, if not sweeter than this sugar? This is perfect. I just need sugar. Like, is this there a donut go. or there something? <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to take this with me for the rest of the segment. I like that little thing you gave me, that treat. It tastes nice, right? That's and very that's nice. sweetened with monk fruit. Monk fruit. Monk okay. fruit. Okay. Oil. So, right. So when it comes to oil, a lot of the times we're using oil for baking, for cooking, for using it raw on salads. Yep. But I'm not a big fan of some of the more common vegetable oils. Okay. Like soy, canola, and corn. Not so much, Not huh? so much, because often they're refined, they can be genetically engineered, and there's also chemicals that they use to pull the oils from the actual product, right? So it's okay. just a chemical, the processing, they use quite a bit of oils in it. So instead... All right. Olive oil, which I'm sure, yeah. yes, I see a lot of the heads nodding. A lot of people are already using olive oil. Yes. So what I want to talk about is the quality of the olive oil and what should be, we should be looking for when we're buying olive oil. Okay. Okay, Let's so number one, EVOO, extra virgin olive oil. That's the gold standard. Yes. We also want to look for an olive oil that's in a dark bottle. Mm -hmm. And that's because when it's in a light bottle or plastic, it lets the light in. And when the light gets let in, it could turn the oil rancid. Got so it. we don't want to eat that, right? Right. Now, here, I want you to take, here, I'm going to have you try this. So when you're buying an olive oil, it should have a bit of a grassy note. So smell that. It should okay. taste a little bit, like, have a smell a little bit like grass. Yeah. And then it should have a fruity flavor. And then when you pour it in the back of your throat, so get it to that back of your throat, it should have a bit of a burning sensation. Mm-hmm. Do you feel that? I do. That means uh -huh. <laughs> it's a good quality olive oil. And you know what it should be? It should be the sort of thing that you can eat like this. Right. Right? So because I'm okay with bread. eating it. Yes. Yeah. It's it's mild enough that you can eat it. I want to know about the, the, the heat point, though, the smoke point. Like the smoke a, point of olive oil. Yeah, yeah, so olive oil, the smoke point is generally around 375. Yeah. So it's great for baking or even eating it raw. One important thing, have you heard of fake olive oil? No. Anybody ever heard of fake olive oil? Okay, so fake olive oil is a thing. And okay. basically, it's when companies want to reduce the cost. So they mix canola or corn oil with olive oil in order to bring that price point down. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the quality is not so good, right? Yeah. So you want to, when it comes to olive oil, price really does play an important role. Okay. So if you're buying something that's super cheap, quality is probably cheap as well. How do you know if it's fake? Will it show in the ingredient list? It will not list? tell you on, that's a great question. It'll actually not tell you. So you mm. want to go for that EVOO. That is the gold okay. standard. That's what we want to be buying. Very okay. important. Yeah. All right, because that can't be fake stuff. Uh, let's talk about this. We've got apple cider vinegar yes. here. Yes, all right. So Guys, this is... it stinks. Does anybody use this at home? Yeah, okay, so I've heard so many great things about it. Yes. Uh, is, the, is it true? Should we be drinking this? Yes, we should be drinking it. So okay. we want to stay away from the white distilled vinegar. Luckily, yeah. it's not used so much in food preparation, but it's really good to clean your house. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing to clean your house, right? Yes. So that's what I would use it for. So apple cider vinegar and balsamic are my two favorites. Okay. Apple cider vinegar, the reason why I love it is that it does have research behind it for weight loss and blood sugar regulation. Okay. So yes, it's great to eat. It has so many different benefits as well. So if you want to take it for regulating blood sugar, mm -hmm. so you put about two tablespoons in a cup of water and mm -hmm. you drink it 30 minutes before a meal. Okay. And that'll help to keep your blood sugar regulated. And if you want to eat it for, or drink it for weight loss, yeah. you can take two tablespoons and drink it once a day. Can you do that? You can. I mean, no, but can you actually do that? I don't love the taste of it, but yeah. a lot of people do. And there's also there are also drinks on the market you can buy that's made with apple cider vinegar that right. tastes pretty good. Okay. All yeah, right. so there are Fair different enough. options. So and then when it comes to loss. balsamic, yeah. you want to make sure, in my opinion, you want to make sure you go for an organic version because the grapes that it's made from are heavily sprayed with pesticides, but as well, Balsamic vinegar, a lot of brands add sulfites to it, which is a preservative. Oh. And people have allergic reactions to, preservative, to, to that preservative, especially yes. myself. You can get all red, red and flushed. Okay. So again, when it comes to balsamic, organic is the gold standard, in my opinion. Got it. Let's talk about butter, because I grew up on margarine. All right, so and it was just like, I did. We had margarine in our house. We all that did, was like right? in the 80s, it was sort of like, stay away from fat. Right. But now it's like, eat the fat. Stay right. away from the plastic food. So, Butter, right. is, butter was vilified because of its saturated fat content yeah. as well as cholesterol levels. But now experts are saying, not so bad anymore. Mm -hmm. Butter is actually really good for us. And that's okay. because it has vitamins and it has minerals. Yeah. It also has something called lecithin. Lecithin helps us metabolize fats in our body. Yeah. And it has CLA, which is conjugated linoleic acid, which research shows that people who consume CLA through food, mm -hmm. actually it helps them to lose weight and it provides, really? yeah. And what's great about it, too, is that it lowers the risk of cardiovascular disease and cancer. Yeah. So butter is great for us. Okay. Now, the gold standard when it comes to butter is grass-fed. So I want you to take a look at this. This, mm -hmm. is, this is regular butter. Mm -hmm. This is grass-fed. Look at the difference in the color. Yeah, way different. So grass-fed has higher CLA levels, yeah. higher omega-3s, which we know, again, are very important for us, but yeah. also 
the color is because of its beta carotene content. Oh. Beta carotene comes from the, the diet of the grass fed cows. Beta carotene is important for converting to vitamin A in our body for a host of different things, including our eyesight. So it's really important. Really good. Yeah, really good important. information there. Okay, so I'm going back to basics. I've got to fix that apple cider vinegar situation and maybe try some of that. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea.